A very good evening to all brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Today is the 18th August 2022, Thursday class. So we'll be commencing our physical class with the physical puja now. Let us now compose our mind, develop the faith, Sada, Virya, then mindfully we shall commence the puja chanting. Namo Pensu Se Chia Moni Fo Namo Pensu Se Chia Moni Fo Namo Pensu Se Chia Moni Fo Namo Kwan Se Ying Pusa Namo Kwan Se Ying Pusa Namo Kwan Se Ying Pusa Namo Fo Pusa Namo Fo Pusa Namo Fo Pusa Arahang Sama Sam Buddha Bhagawa Buddha Bhagawan Tang Abiwa Demi Swakato Bhagawata Damo Damang Namasami Supati Pano Bhagavato Sauk Sangho Sanghang Namami Namo Atas Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhas Namo Atas Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Bhuttang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sanghang Saranang Gachami the TMP Bhutang Saranang Gachami The TMP Dhammang Saranang Gachami The TMP Sanghang Saranang Gachami The TMP Bhutang Saranang Gachami Tatiyam pi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiyam pi sanghang saranang gachami Panati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami Adina dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami Kami su mi cha cha ra ve ramani sikha padang samadhyami Nusawada ve ramani sikha padang samadhyami Sura me raya majapama datana Ve Ramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Okay, now turn to page 3 of the chanting book. We will continue with the Puja Offering Chanting. Padipa Puja Offerings of Light Ganna sarpa ditena dipena tamadang sina tiloka dipang sambudang pujayami tamonudang ganda sambara yutena dupena hang sugang hina Puja ye puja ni yang tang puja baja na mutamang wana ganda guno petang 
เอตังกสุมาสันทติมปุญญายามิมุนินดาสสิริปัจจสารุโรเหปุญเยมิบดังกสุเมนะเนนะปุณเนนะมเตนะเจโหทุโมกังปุปังมิลายติยัตาอิดังมิกายโยตตายติวินาสบาวังอดีวาเซตุโนบันเตปานิยังปริคาปิตังอานุกัมปังอุปาดายะปาติกันหาตุมุตเมังอาดิวาเซตุโนบันเตปาเลปริกาปิตังอานุกัมปังอุปาดายะปาติกันหาตุมุตเมังอาดิวาเซตุโนบันเตโบจานังปริกาปิตังอานุคัมปังอุปาดายะปาฏิกันหาตุมุตเมังนั่งวิวชันเดปุญญาเอสเพรสชันเบสันอวันดัสตันนิงออฟเดสิกนิฟิคันส์ของออดิสปุญญาออฟเฟรนส์สิกนิฟิคันส์ของออฟเฟรนส์ของไลท์เมื่อดิสออฟเฟรนส์ของไลท์ถึงเดบุตเดบริงส์ฟอร์ตเดคอนเซสและคอนดิชันส์ถูกอิลูมินีดอัลมาย And help arise the needed clarity and understanding to dispel all darkness or ignorance therein. Significance of offering of water. May this offering of pure, clear, cool water lead us to the pure, clear Dhamma that cools and doses off the fires of all defilements in our mind. Significance of offering of incense. May our morality, virtue, and understanding shine forth far and wide, just like the fragrance of this incense, which we are offering to the Blessed One, who is perfect in wisdom and virtue. Significance of offering of fruits. May this offering of fruits remind us of the Dana Parami of generosity and the fruit of our karma. So that we will diligently strive on with heedfulness to attain the path and fruition as soon as possible. Significance of offering of flowers. May this constant offering of flowers to the Blessed One strengthen our faith and constantly remind us of the impermanence of this body. So that we will diligently and sincerely strive on to cultivate sila, samadhi, and panya. Leading to ultimate liberation, the born free deepa. Making of overall aspiration by the power of all these merits, born of these offerings, may our spiritual faculties of sada, virya, sati, samadhi, and panya be further strengthened until they become balas or powers. Then finally, sharing and transfer marriage to all beings. May this marriage be shared and transferred to all beings without exception, especially to those who have the condition and affinity to receive them. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, let's pay respect to the gem. ปตังปเจมดมังปเจมสังหังปเจมโอเคยาวแค่บิสิตะ just relax body and mind <laughs> then we shall Have half an hour of awareness-based meditation. <laughs> This awareness-based meditation is very simple. Eh? View of the light. Then later I will set the alarm. Eh?
So for 30 minutes, uh, we will develop the awareness-based meditation. Uh, hmm. So like the sentence go, awareness-based meditation means to develop inner awareness so that we have the ability to be aware from within. Uh, uh. So for those who are new, I think Pamasuri's nephew and the mother, they are new, so maybe I will give some short instruction. Uh. You just relax completely, body and mind, uh. relax, fang song. Uh, don't try to think or do anything, just relax. Uh, be at ease, relax. Body and mind. Normally after a tired day, your body is quite stressed up. So you have to relax it. Be at ease. Function. Then your mind also, tell your mind, within this half an hour, you want to meditate, you want to develop inner mindfulness or awareness, zhen so that you can develop the inner peace, the inner calmness, and the inner mindfulness or awareness, yeah? to be aware, that's it. So to support your meditation, there are four support to develop this awareness-based meditation. First is relax completely, body and mind. Then don't try to think, don't try to know, don't try to do anything. Just be at peace, relax, and just silent everything. Silent means no thought, no thinking, nothing. Yeah. Then maintain awareness. Aware means no thinking, just aware. Whatever arise, aware. Thought arise, aware. Whatever you hear through your tactile or hearing or senses, just away, finish. Then the next contact or next activity, whatever that arises, you just away, silent, away, silent. Sometimes I say finish means no more allowing the thought to continue to proliferate or continue to dwell on what you think. So, aware and relax is most important. Eh? Relax into whatever mind state that arises. Relax into whatever activity that arises. Just relax. Be at ease. Then maintain awareness. Just do this. The third support is maintain awareness for as long as you can. As long as you can be in the state of relax, inner awareness. Develop the stability of it. So the third support is stabilize the awareness for as long as you can. Then later on, when your awareness develop, you will come to realize you hardly think. There is no thought, no thinking, nothing. The mind becomes very quiet, very still. Yeah. Then your body is at the same time relaxed, peaceful, Tranquil, quiet. Uh, just do that. Uh. Then for those who already know how to meditate, you can already develop the awareness within. You just relax, maintain awareness, silent everything, and stay at the heart area. <coughs> and develop the fourth support, which is trust. Trust your nature to develop the meditative movement. No need to allow the thought to come in, to direct it or to interfere with the meditation. Uh, means no thinking involved, no thought involved. Just be aware, mindful. Hmm. You can slowly, mindfully come out of the meditation. Eh? Then Turn to page 6 of the chanting book. We will, uh, the book. We will chant the invocation to the devas.
invocation to the devas. In this universe, in the entirety, let the deities or devas come here. Let them hear the good teachings of the king of sages, which gives heaven and release Nibbana. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. Samantha Chiakawali Su Atra Gachan to Devata Saddamang Muni Rajasa Sunantu Sakamokadang Dhammas Vanankalo Ayang Badanta Dhammas Vanankalo Ayang Badanta Dhammas Vanankalo Ayang Badanta Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Hiti peso bhagawa arahang sama sambuddho Vijacharana sampano sugato loka vidu Anutaro purisa dhamma sarati Satta deva manusanang Buddha Bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehipaseko Opanaiko Pachyatang Veditabho Vinohiti Supatipano Bhagavato Savakasango Ujupatipano Bhagavato Savakasango Nyaya Patipano Bhagavato Savakasango Samichi Patipano Bhagavato Sāvaka Sāngo Yadidāng Chattari Purisa Yogane Atta Purisa Pugala Esa Bhagavato Sāvaka Sāngo Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakkeneyo Anjali Karaneyo Anutarang punyang ketang lokasati Sadu, sadu, sadu Okay, you can be seated and just relax body and mind Then we shall continue from the previous Thursday sharing eh? We were at this appendix six, eh? I think we are at the third one, six point three, eh? page two hundred and forty four of the Heart Sutra book. Eh? Eh. We have finished six point one, which is a trained mind. Then we also finish what is an untrained mind. Then. 6.3 is on how to train the mind, huh? training the mind. Maybe for the benefit of those who didn't attend, I will just go through it as a revision. Huh? So this Appendix 6, the title is Training the Mind. B. 
we have to train this mind which is heedless, think a lot, always, most of the time, lost in thought, heedlessly proliferating, chattering, verbalizing, and doing all those funny things. Mm. So untrained mind is heedless, it tends to have these characteristics. So how do we train the mind? We train the mind via understanding the essential Dhamma as taught by the Buddha and the meditation as taught by the Buddha. So all this we have gone through. Then I even explain how we develop the training of the mind or awareness-based meditation by understanding the trinity. As a human being, we have a form and mind. Apart from this physical body, which is the form, and the mundane thinking mind, we also have the pure awareness within. They call it yeah, the pure consciousness. That is just aware, that nature inside. That's why when we meditate, we have to start from there. Because from there, the pure awareness is the first thing that comes out from our pure nature, the source. Then when it comes out, we either use it to meditate, to develop the direct seeing, the awakening, and the insight into truth or reality, the universal characteristics of nature. Or we use it to live life for mundane living. To do that, we have to make use of the physical senses, the five physical senses plus the brain, the sixth sense basis. Then the mind, mundane mind or the consciousness within can make contact with the sense basis. Together with the sense data, it triggers off the respective consciousness. That's why as a human being, we can become conscious of what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we tactile feel and think. And when you can silence your mind to see that, you will understand clearly who you are, what you are, what is this so-called human being all about. There is there another nature within which is beyond the form of mind. Uh, the Buddha called the form and mind, the five aggregates of form and mind, because within the mind there are four more aggregates. The physical body, the form, external form is the first aggregate. Then within the mind there are four more aggregates, because the Buddha subdivided the mind into four things. He said, to understand this we need to inquire, what can our mind do? Our mind can feel there is the ability of the mind to feel when it's hot or cold, when we have this tactile sensation, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, whether the sensation or the feeling is favorable or unfavorable. So we can have that ability. So that is one of the aggregates of the mind. Then we inquire, what else can your mind do? We can know the world. We can interact with the world through what? Through our mind to perceive things. Whatever we see, all of the external form, we can perceive them. Like the Buddha image, the people, the house, and whatever. So this power of perception, or what the Buddha calls Sanya, is also one of the aggregates of mind. This is what your mind can do. And it can also perceive what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you technically feel and think. That's why the sixth sense come in. So perception is a very important aspect of mind that allows you to know the world, interact with the world. Without perception, your mind cannot know anything. So all knowing comes from 
perception. So perception is the one that brings the external form or whatever we perceive through our senses into the mind. That's why this mental form together with the four aggregates of mind also arise what we call the five mental aggregates of form and mind or we call it a thought. Yeah. When the pure consciousness has its content, then it becomes a thought. And what are the content? The content of consciousness are the aggregates of mind together with the receptacle which is the consciousness itself. So we have gone through two, feeling and perception. What else can your mind do? As a human being, you have been using this mind for so long. What else can your mind do? Eh? Your mind, as you all know, can do what? Eh? Think a lot, isn't it? Become emotional. Isn't it? Eh? Then it can have all the various type of movement. Isn't it? We call it Sankara activity, mental states. That's why they have a lot of English words to describe it. But each of these words describe only a small aspect of what Sankara is. Yeah. Thinking is also one of them. Mental states means your mind can develop certain form of mental states like peaceful mind, calm mind, tranquil mind. These are all the mental states. Then the restlessness of mind. These are all the possibility of mental states. Then envy, jealousy, hatred, eh? desire, craving. All these are mental sensation or they call it uh, mental states where the mind can be developed into. Then it can also plan, it can also scheme. Uh, then it can also develop mental formation. In short, whatever your mind can do, including feeling and perception, is called Sankara. So basically the content of consciousness is Sankara. Hmm. And the last one is, the Buddha say, our mind can become conscious, conscious of things. That's why the four aggregate is consciousness. We can become conscious of what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we tactile feel and things. And through these senses, the sixth sense, we become alive, we become eliminated. We can know the world, we can interact with the world. Then it's like we are real, we exist. Yeah. But when you meditate, you will come to a great understanding or awakening that this form of mind is just a phenomenon that are dependent originating, condition arising, causal phenomena, supported by supporting condition. It arises because of causes and conditions. It's not a permanent and changing entity where you can cling on to, hold on to and say, this is me, this is I, therefore all this can be mine. No such thing. Yeah. So if you use the pure awareness to trigger off sense of consciousness, then it develops mundane thinking, mundane living. That is how the triangle eh? can be explained. That's why to create mundane living or experience, you use the pure awareness and the sense basis to trigger off mundane consciousness. Then the other direction is you train the mind to be aware, silent, without thought. Means not triggering of whatever thought process. You only become aware at the moment of contact where the sense data and the mind and the sense basis they come into contact like the physical experiment you on the switch the light bulb lights up 
So the lighting up of the light bulb is like the mind become conscious. Conscious of what you see, or what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you tactile if you are thing. So at the moment of consciousness, according to the Buddha, if you meditate, you silence your mind, you will know that there is no activity, no content, no movement, nothing. No word, no concept, nothing. No aggregates of mind. It's just the pure seeing or pure hearing. It's the pure awareness. Like the Buddha say, in the seeing, there is only the seeing. There is no one to see yet. The seeing consciousness, the pure consciousness, that seeing consciousness. Hearing, same. Smell, taste, tactile, and thought process is the same. So that is awareness-based meditation. When you are aware, you stabilize the awareness, then the mind, the true mind, the silent mind can do all those things. It can be at the moment of seeing, at the moment of hearing, all in sati means the pure seeing, the pure hearing, the direct seeing, the direct hearing, without the words, the concept. So this is how you develop the direct seeing, the awakening, then the wisdom. Then once the wisdom or understanding develops, you use it to live life that is called noble living. Because the understanding which is wisdom, Yoniso Manaska, is connected to the form and mind, the five aggregates. Then after we finish that, we describe to you as a cultivator what is a trained mind so that you understand whether you have trained your mind or not. So now I will quickly read through. A trained mind is always silent, heedful, peaceful, relaxed, and naturally aware within. So it's easy to check in. It. Can you train your mind until it's completely silent, without thought? Silent means no more thinking, no more verbalization, no more chattering, the mind completely quiet, still, no movement, no activity. So when you are able to do that, means your mundane mind is completely silent, still, or in the state of tranquility. Under that state, you are heedful, you are peaceful, you have clarity of mind. And you are completely relaxed, naturally aware. That's why just now the half an hour of awareness based meditation is to develop this awareness within so that that mind, instead of heedlessly lost in thought and thinking, becomes the true mind, the silent mind, the meditative mind, the mind that is trained, that can see things clearly, can understand truth and awaken. So that is what a trained mind is. Then the second point is, because it is trained, it has clarity, born of inner peace and inner awareness. Then it has the ability to see things as they are, leading to the wisdom needed to arise, the yoniso manaskara or wise attention at the moment of sense experience. So that one is always peaceful with the moment to live life. So these are the very good pointer for you to check whether you are trained your mind or not. Then this mind that is trained, it will listen to you. If you want it to be silent, aware, peaceful, it will just be silent, aware and peaceful. It will just be so. It will not like heedlessly lost in thought, like do things without you having any ability to regulate it or control it. It does what it like. Yeah. You don't believe, you check your mind. You ask the mind, don't think, it cannot, <laughs> there is no train. And you say, don't get angry, don't become unhappy, don't become miserable. It doesn't li listen to you. 
when condition is such, when you see something you don't like, when you hear something you don't like, or when you recall something, recall to mind something very frightening, fearful, or you recall your early childhood scars of memory or phobia, you develop unhappiness, or you see somebody whom you don't like, or you meet out with a violent person, an angry person, a fierce person, uh, a great bully, uh, or you confront certain type of fierce animal, uh, like fierce barking dog, or even uh, snakes and all that. Thing. You will develop fear and all that. Thing. So, how come your mind cannot be trained? How come your mind keep on behaving the mundane way, like normal people, full of fear, full of worry, full of anxiety, uh, full of sorrow, <laughs> lamentation, most of the time unhappy. You are seldom happy and peaceful. Means your mind is not trained. If your mind is trained, it will not do that. Then, if it's trained, it listen to you. After that, you can use it and direct it appropriately. I want to meditate, it will just silent and meditate. I want to use it to cultivate noble effort, it will follow me. I want to be at the moment of seeing, it will just do that. Then, if I want to arise the thought to live life, then it will do that. And that is a trained mind. So the next pointer is it will become like a servant to serve you and it will serve you well. Then a trained mind is ever mindful, constantly meditative, and is the base from which wisdom will keep on arising. So that is how you develop the understanding of a trained mind. Then what is an untrained mind? Hmm. An untrained mind is heedless. It thinks a lot and reacts to sense experience a lot. And is constantly lost in thought most of the time. And as per the Mapada verse 21, the heedless are as it did. And spiritually, you don't stand a chance because your mind is not trained. Then the untrained mind is like a devil's workshop and it will make you evil, whereas a devil is an evil being. Then you will have no control over it. It actually controls you and dominates over you and takes over your life, causing you suffering and misery. Hmm. You, the thinking mind, the mundane mind, which is heedless, need to be trained. Deluded with wrong view, it becomes easily influenced by what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you, uh, your senses, eh? what you think, and all those things. So, whenever sense experience arises because of the delusion, because of the wrong view, it easily stirs its mind or reacts to sense experience, to become angry, selfish, emotional, and fearful, leading to suffering. Then it has no understanding of what is going on in life. It lacks wisdom because it is deluded. So all this we have gone through. Eh? So now I come on to 6.3. How to train this mind, the mundane mind, that thing a lot, that is heedless. So the first thing you have to understand is without wisdom, living beings are heedless. Hence they suffer because they don't understand life. And why are they heedless? That is very important. Then to understand life, one must understand the secret of life, which is basically the four number truth as taught by the Buddha. And that is the essence of the Buddha's teaching. You understand the Four Noble Truth, you understand the secret of life, you will know how to live life. 
We have the four noble truths are very unique too. That can make you understand life deeply, extensively. It's like the secret of life. Both mundane and supramundane, they are all there. Hmm. To understand the Four Noble Truths, one must train one's mind to be heedful, to understand what is going on in life, so as to understand who are we, what are we, and how our mind functions, so that we understand what causes the suffering, and how our deluded mundane mind get muddled up in life, become tormented. Then the untrained mind is heedless and not peaceful. Why? Because the five mental hindrances of sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restless of mind and doubt are there. These mental hindrances will hinder your mind from entering the meditative state of inner peace with inner awareness. And to overcome the five mental hindrances, one only need to cultivate the five spiritual faculties of Sada, Giriya, Sati, Samadhi, and Panya as taught by the Buddha. So this one is straightforward. Eh? We have gone through this before. When the five spiritual faculties are there, the f- mental hindrance will be gone and the mind will be trained automatically. That's why having the five spiritual faculties of Sada, Giriya, the Samadhi and Panya is very important. That's why we should work on the cultivation of the five spiritual faculty. We are our puja, which we have just done before we start the class, or what we call devotional practice and daily religious routine. So every time we have a religious ceremony or class or whatever sharing, Normally, the Buddha will recommend the opening puja followed by the closing puja. Then there is also what the Buddha calls devotional practice, to practice devotion towards the Buddha and his teaching, so that we can develop the faith in the Buddha and his teaching. So now coming back to the puja, how do we develop the faith in the Buddha and his teaching. Through understanding how special and unique the Buddha is. The Buddha is not only enlightened, he is fully enlightened, perfect in wisdom and virtue. You can say the moment, the time he was born until he became a Samasabuddha. When he became a Samasamada, he is the wisest and the most virtuous living being ever to be born. And to have such a great being to be your teacher, your spiritual teacher, your master, you will develop a lot of respect and gratitude for him. Yeah, he is so unique. Mm. And his teaching, because of his great perfection and enlightenment, he was able to summarize all his understanding into just four number two. This is the essence of his teaching. So this four number two, they are very, very beautiful and very unique. Because if you can understand this four number two or awaken to it, you can become enlightened. Enlightened means what? You can live as a human being without having to suffer anymore. You will understand clearly who are you, what are you, what this form and mind is all about, what life is all about, what living is all about. Then you will always be peaceful, happy, joyful, tranquil and still. Nothing in this world can affect you. Not even the physical body going through all a sickness and death, it won't affect you then the realities of life and existence, the eight conditions, the worldly condition, cannot affect you. You have that wisdom to become at peace with all these things. So there is the uniqueness of his teaching. 
So when you have faith in the Buddha and his teaching, you become different. You will definitely determine to go all out to cultivate this teaching. Yes, this teaching is very rare, very unique. And without this teaching, you suffer, you become miserable, you become afflicted. So you develop the faith through knowing who the Buddha is, how special, how unique he is. And through that faith, you develop the virya, the spiritual zeal of the mystery to learn this teaching. There is a second spiritual faculty. Then when you develop this virya to cultivate, you will definitely cultivate sati or mindfulness or awareness. Because according to the Buddha, verse, the Mahapada verse 21, Heedfulness is the path to the deathless. The heedful never die. So to be heedful, you must be mindful first. Then stabilize it to be ever mindful. Then use it to develop the wisdom or to meditate. Following the meditation as taught by the Buddha. Then you become heedful. A heedful person is ever mindful, constantly meditative. That's why you must train your mind to be aware then stabilize it to be collected, unwavering. And that is samadhi, the false spiritual faculty. And with that, the five mental hindrance cease to be. Then wisdom keep on arising. Panya keep on arising. So this is how you develop the five spiritual faculty through the puja offering, through the devotional practice. Then at the same time, you develop the ten merit to resection. Uh, you develop uh, the dana, means we make offering. Then we renew our precept. Second meritual section, then we pay respect the uh, meritual section. Then after that, we rejoice, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. It's another meritual section. Then after that, we listen to Dhamma, another meritual section. Then we straighten our view, another meritual section. Then after that, we share merit, we transfer merit, then we develop the understanding of all this wholesomeness by making aspiration and all this thing. So all these are very conducive and very wholesome for the training of the mind to develop the cultivation of the Dhamma. Because not only the spiritual faculty there, you develop the merge. To develop the cultivation, the Buddha said there are three things we must do. First is dana. So according to the Buddha, you need to develop three things. Dana, sila, bhavana. Dana is generosity. So when you make offering, when you make donation, generosity, you develop dana parami. And this dana parami will help you to have the good life because without dana parami, you cannot receive all the wealth and all the good things. Yeah. Because there is this nature's law which the Buddha says is the law of karma. You reap what you sow. Do good because good. Do evil because evil. You plant the seed of evil. You reap the fruit of evil. You plant the seed of wholesomeness. You will reap the fruit of wholesomeness. That's why the more you give, the more come back to you. If you steal, cheat, deceive, you break the precept, you get into trouble. Where in future, people will cheat you. People will deceive you and cause harm and suffering to you. Then after that, when you keep your sealer, this is morality. And to do this is very important. This is how you start your training. You keep your precepts so that you can avoid all evil. So that you don't break your karma. So sila 
When you have them, it's a virtue. It's a meritorious action. When you don't kill, when you don't harm, you don't commit sexual misconduct, when you don't lie, don't cheat, or don't deceive, and don't partake in toxicant, morally, you are very, very virtuous and upright. And because of that, you will not develop karmic negativity and no karmic suffering will follow because you reap what you sow. When you keep your sila, maintain your morality, you avoid all evil. Without evil, there is no negative karma. That's why your life becomes tolerable, much endurable and more meaningful and more beautiful. Then, keeping precept alone is only the first training. This is to avoid all evil. Then, to follow the advice of the Buddha is very important. Because according to this law of karma, the Buddha came out with this understanding. Because of this law, the Buddha came out with his three advices. The famous advices of the Buddha. This one is covered under Dhammapada verse 183. The Pali chanting always eh, remind people of the advice of our Buddha. Dhammapada verse 183. Sabha papasa akaranam kusalesa upasambadan sachitta pariyota padan etang buddhana sasana so according to the Buddha, because there is this law of karma, you are born of your karma, heir to your karma, conditioned and supported by your karma, and you are what you are because of your karma. If that is the case, what must you do? You have to take care of karma in that, so that karma take care of your life, where you are born of it. You inherit all of karmic consequences. And you are every moment, every instant supported by it, and you are what you are because of it. So if you take care of karma, you will have the good life. Karma will take care of your life. So how to take care of karma? Keep your precept. Keeping precept is the first advice to avoid all evil. Then the second advice is cultivate wholesomeness. To cultivate wholesomeness, you need to meditate. So this bhavana is meditation or mind training. So you have to train your mind to be in a meditative state to develop the meditation. So when you do this, the second advice of the Buddha is avoid all evil, then do good, develop wholesomeness. And this is how bhavana, the training, the meditative training, means the cultivation of the Buddha Dharma can bring about the second advice to cultivate wholesomeness. Even the puja, opening and closing, is very wholesome. Devotional practice is very wholesome. Listening to Dhamma, straightening your view, rejoicing, all these are very wholesome. So, this first two advice, you not only develop, the third advice also, purify your mind, to develop wisdom, to become enlightened, is also covered under bhavana. So once you start with these three, then cultivation starts. Uh, so cultivation is more than training the mind. Training the mind is here, the last one. But to cultivate dana and sila, you need to train your mind first. If your mind is not trained, you cannot keep your precept. If your mind is not trained, you cannot understand the importance of the teaching and you don't know what to emphasize on. You will not believe in the law of karma. That's why everything comes back to bhavana, mental training. And this is what cultivation is all about. So this cultivation is dhamma, huh? dhamma cultivation. So with this, we will continue, huh? then you will understand. When the five spiritual faculties are there, the mental hindrance will be gone, the mind will be trained automatically. That's why you should work on the spiritual faculties, 
They are your puja and devotional practice and daily religious routine. Okay, puja and devotional practice I have covered. Daily religious routine means every day when you wake up till you sleep, what must you do? You must develop this religious routine or what we call the spiritual practice or cultivation. Life itself is the meditation. While living life, you can develop the cultivation and the training. It doesn't mean that you must retire or on weekend when you are not working, then only you can meditate or cultivate. No. The Buddha said it can be a religious routine throughout the day you can do it. So what normally the Buddha advises is when you wake up, the first moment when you are aware, you arise from your sleep. The faith must be there. Faith in what? The Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. That's why you pay respect to Triple Gem. To renew your faith. No matter where you are, just come down from your bed, pay respect. That if you want to like wash up first, clean up, you can. But do it mindfully. Otherwise you can just develop the silencing of the mind. Means you can start by radiating metta to all beings around your house. Then do some chanting. Yeah? Devotional chanting. Then you chant the salutation to the Buddha. Or you recite the, uh, what they call, salutation to the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Huh? The short one. Then after that, take refuge, renew your precepts, then after that, if you have time, you can continue with the chanting of the salutation to the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha, the full version. If you don't have the time, you can skip that. Then you straight away relax, maintain awareness and meditate. Initially, it can be 5, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Later, when you are more skillful, maybe half an hour. Yeah. If you have the time, you can do longer. Then after that, you mindfully come out of the meditation, pay respect again, then start your day. You can prepare yourself, need to go to the washroom, answer nature's call, do everything mindful, aware. When you wash up, answer nature's call, then while you change from your pajamas or sleeping gear to your household or office gear. It depends on what day. Then after that, when you go down to your altar, first thing, pay respect. Yeah. Before you leave the house, pay respect. In between, mindful, aware. Then you need to go out to drive your car to the office or buy things or whatever. Maintain mindfulness throughout the day. Then whenever you go to a temple, first thing, pay respect to the triple gem, the altar. Then silence your mind for a while. Yeah. Then be mindful throughout. Then every time you come home, first thing, pay respect to your altar. Yeah. This one you do when you are still under training. Yeah. After you have developed the understanding, you can skip some of this. You don't have to do anymore. Yeah. It's up to you if you find it something that can give you that routine that develops the stability of your cultivation, then you continue to do. Until one day you will come to know the Buddha coin. You already developed the understanding. You are beyond training. Then you don't have to train like before. Then you can take it easy. Because by then your mind is transformed. Throughout the day you are mindful and aware. Mindful. Then before you sleep, do the same. Yeah, Meditate for a while you can. If you are very tired, then meditate in your bed, lie down. Yeah. So this religious routine is very important. Then sometimes like the Okayamita, apart from our religious routine, now we include the Bodhisattva vow. So you incorporate them in. Maybe morning session, recite it. Or evening session, recite it. Just 
to keep yourself in touch with all this uh, daily religious routine. Then we also have our Tuesday class, Thursday class, Sunday class. So if you can join the physical class now, you should join. Otherwise, you can attend via the Zoom. Uh, then whenever there is spiritual activity, like the Saturday or maybe later on, like before, we have the spiritual retreat, the annual retreat. Then we have our Monday, what they call uh, Kayamitas, Hawatana. Uh, all this activity we can attend and develop mindfulness, heedfulness, rejoice in the wholesomeness. So these are training that we should develop. Uh, okay, then maybe I will go on a little bit more eh? after I cover the religious routine. What is the time now? Oh, almost, eh? 9.34, and another six minutes. Eh? Okay, the next point is the three phases of Dhamma. They are Pariyati, Patipati, and Pativeda. So, the most important is Pativeda. Yeah. But Patipati is also important. Pariyati is also deep, important. So, these three phases of Dhamma is very easy to understand when you listen attentively to the Buddha's explanation. The Buddha said the first thing that cultivators need to do or devotees need to develop is pariyati. means the learning of this Dhamma that he has taught us. So how do we learn them? We can learn them through listening to what he has expounded or proclaimed to us. Like now, my sharing, you can listen. So, listening is one of the ways. Then after you listen, you can reflect, contemplate, then inquire to develop more stable understanding. Then, like nowadays, we have the uh, help of all this technology, technological development. We can even read from books, from the internet. We can even listen to the recording, the audio file, the video file, and other things. Then we can also record them into MP3. Then we can take our own time to develop the understanding of Pariyati over the computer and the internet. Uh, so all these are part of Pariyati, learning of the teaching, various ways to do it. In the Buddha's time, you can only listen, and you have to be near him. There's no recorder, nothing, no book, no writing or so at that time. So now we are indeed very fortunate. We have all this. So the learning of the teaching it is now much easier. But there is a fallback to all these things. You know, what is written in the internet? You don't know whether it's authentic or not. In fact, a lot in the internet, you have to be very careful. Uh, a lot of them are, there is motive behind what they write. <laughs> and most of them are individual views, opinion, and belief of what they think is the correct teaching. So, unless you have your past, you, you will have the tendency to read the wrong one. Then, without knowing it, you think that is Buddhism, and you think that is the Buddha Dharma, and you go and learn it. So that is the danger. Yeah. But apart from that, the modern technology and books available give you a great opportunity to receive all this information, but you have to screen through it through understanding and wisdom. Yeah. Then the second phase is, after you learn the teaching, the Buddha say, you have to put it into practice. Yeah? If you don't put it into practice, no use. <laughs> like you read all the cookbook, how to make a cake and all those things, how to cook, how to what. But if you don't try it out, you can never know whether you have developed the understanding or not. So theory and knowledge is not really wisdom, 
uh, means you have to really put it into practice, cultivate it. So putting into practice, cultivating the Dhamma learn to become a living reality. Yeah? So you have to learn the teaching, then put it into practice in daily life so that it can become a living reality. It's the second phase of Dhamma. And that one is the major part. That is the cultivation part, the training part. Yeah. After that, you become enlightened. Then phase three, Pativeda, you reap the fruit of your hard work, your cultivation. Then you become enlightened. You can live the life of enlightenment. And that third phase of the mind is the most beautiful phase of your life. You can live life to the fullest, without suffering, without misery, with full understanding. Your life is perfect, full of joy, full of tranquility, stillness, happiness. You are like very blessed. Mm. So we stop here. Eh? Mm. So that I will continue with the explanation of the three phases of Dhamma in more detail. The next Thursday class. Eh? <coughs> okay, now the second part is meditation reporting followed by uh, whatever question you may have eh? then you can also share on what you have developed as understanding the mind daily life eh? yeah. Britain okay ni jiang le hen duo guan yi na ge na ge karmic the na ge explanations wo wo zai chong ting de shou wa wo jue de like aspiration phase on the yeah especially uh 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 wrong view uh uh no uh or uh 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 yeah, how pizza like a karmic correct the it's a cheat of obstruction. Uh, yeah, obstruction. Uh, 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 woman becoming as a woman the daily life we mean sequan. It's just like what I explain or Si Chang explained to you is still from the thought. Always remember whenever you are aware these are all the thoughts trying their various what they call deceiving and cunning way of telling you the same thing through the back door uh, by allowing you to become deluded again where you start to analyze, you start to reason because these are habits that we develop before we have mindfulness, awareness and heedfulness. So when it becomes habit, you try to understand, but you understand it through the thinking, then you get trapped again. Your thought base can never lead to awakening. So what happened is, like I said that day, even very small thing, like the mundane reality, because you have very strong intention to be fulfilling your duty and do things well is righteously. So when you went to a retreat, like you are put in charge of the food and all those things, then whenever there is issue with the food, like you described, first day, they were short, not enough to go around. Second day, repeated. Then you know these are small issue, minor issue, but it starts to affect you, create disturb burns in your mind state and all state. It doesn't mean that your nature don't have the understanding. It has the understanding. That's why you say it's not critical, not important. But you cannot stop it as well. You, you haven't completely rooted it out. The stability of understanding is not there. That's why it can still manifest. It manifests doesn't mean you don't have the understanding. Your nature has the understanding, but because you are not stable enough to live from the awareness nature, you always go back to the thought. You always go back to the memory. And this is the one that always come in and influence us because 
Sometimes we interpret the Dhamma wrongly, then we will have this problem. Because, like I explained the other day, under the salutation to the Sangha, the noble ones, the enlightened being of the Buddha, eh, the Aryan disciples of the Buddha, they have four qualities, or what they call virtue. And this four is like Ichan, Supatipano, Bhagavato, eh, Savaka Sango. So these are the good conduct. Of good conduct is the order of the enlightened disciple of the Buddha. Then we have upright conduct. Good conduct, upright conduct. Upright means virtuous. Then we have wise conduct. Then we have dutiful conduct to do our duty. So these are virtue or conduct that the enlightened beings has. But they are not rigid. Where Dhamma is non-rigid. So good means what? Not the worldly good. The absence of evil is good. Understand? No? So of good conduct means you have the precepts. You are incapable of arising the evil roots. Okay? Then upright means what? Upright means righteous. Righteous not according to society's rule. Righteous according to your Dhamma understanding. The society will have right and wrong. You have gone beyond right and wrong. Why? Because these are duality that exist within the conditioned world. As far as the Dhamma understanding, the unconditioned is, there is no right and wrong. We are all this pertain to the conditioned world. So duality pertains to the conditional world. If you hold on to duality, you have right and wrong, you become rigid. Then like the case you went to, you think that is your duty, you want to do it well, then you feel that you have not done your duty properly. So you feel like you are not upright, you are not like... Uh, You are not doing it enough. Yeah. So, the good conduct and the upright conduct can still affect a person. If you use the mundane thinking to reason, to analyze. Oh, I should have done it this way. But no amount of analysis and reasoning can give you the answer. But the answer is the Dhamma. The Dhamma means what? Like the first one, good conduct. The absence of evil is good. To be righteous, to be upright means if you don't harm people, don't harm anybody, resolve things amicably, then let things be. You do your best. Understand? You have done your best. If things still go wrong, means there are certain karmic conditions behind if meant to be, will be. But at least we do our part. Means if we are in charge of certain things, we make sure that things that we are in charge has been taken care of. First time is okay. Yeah? Things can go wrong. People are not trained, not skillful. So they make some mistake. They cannot estimate the amount of food and all things. So you have that thing. But whatever you are in charge of, you make sure yeah, they accord and flow and fit into the totality. Then sometimes people without their parami, they're not supposed to receive the food. This shortage will arise. Then sometimes they have good parami, the abundance of food will be there. Like our retreat to Sampo Temple, Cameron Highland. I heard a lot of feedback in the video. Every time our 90 day retreat uh, or 5 day retreat, uh, we are all very special. Our food much, much nicer. Uh, and every day like different one, different one. Whereas the same retreat, other monks who went there and conduct, they realized different. It's not to say Fajan Sufu got favor or what. No, because it's the understanding, the condition, the parami and all things. So it's meant to be, will be because when we were there, the camera highland who donate the food and all things, at that time, the food come all good on. That's why Fajan Sufu can cook all those things. Eh? Then it's like not purposely asked uh, him to buy all this. No, 
they just deliver and it falls into place and he can do it. Then sometimes the harvest not so good, the parami not so good, condition not so good. What they receive is that is the best for Chan Sufu can do. So these are the conditions that you have to understand. You must not be rigid. If you rigid and allow the analysis and your reasoning to come in, then the thought will say, Hayo, how come every time like that one? Yeah. Oh. Then you think a Chan Sufu favor us, don't favor others. No, it's not like that. So a lot of things in life, you can see, you can understand. That's why on the way here, Chin Hao asked me the same thing. He said the last Tuesday sharing was very good because that wrong view, very difficult to root out. Even Zhen Fa, the Ci Chi Abbot, she also know happy shoulder tendency, very difficult to root out. Because this has become habitual over maybe millenniums of evolution. Then when you come, you connect back, develop the understanding, then overnight you expect the Monday mind to change. It cannot. It won't change. That's why the understanding has to stabilize. That I used to share with you all that day also same. I also have certain liking. Yeah. Uh, but it is no longer the habitual tendency. Well, this liking is my preference. Like you all know, I like to eat one. Hamiji Falampo and all those things. Yes, it's true. I don't deny it. There are certain food I like, certain food that I dislike, this form of mine. Doesn't really like so much. But it's not because I am juicy that I am craving on. No, if I can have the condition to order and to have those food, I order. And that's if there is no condition, let things be. But don't have to purposely look for it. Sometimes I am with the Very, very, I take you there. Uh, there, I got very nice food suitable for you. You like how you want. I say, is it on the way? If it's not on the way, forget about it. You have to detour and do what, what for? Just because you want to eat that thing. No. And my nature will not do this type of thing. But when the parami is there, things will fall into place and somehow it will happen. That's why, like just now in the dinner, I think uh, Vati also mentioned something, and Pamasuri also mentioned something. To have the condition to receive good food is a parami, and that's how no? It's not by chance, not by like. Uh, you hold me out, or, or you got good luck, or, uh, or you got the means. No, sometimes you have the means, also you cannot receive this type of food. It's like the day the ceremony in Malacca, uh, from Asuri's brother, they organized this for their father's 91st birthday, and the in-laws 92 birthday, or what, I cannot recall. The food was so special. You got money also, you cannot have a chance to eat. But we were invited. That's why it happened. Then, like this, like my career, uh, I think Scotland will know, we were engineering, uh, especially contractor side. Huh? Uh, even myself, most of the time, is a uh, non-contractor. Uh, I'm the client most of the time, and consultant also. I went through the whole industry. But our industry is a lot of good food one. Contractor will buy you dinner and all say they will celebrate your promotion. Then the colleague or they will have this dinner and all those things. Then things that I never dreamed I could have tasted it when I was young. Because when I was young, simple life in the village. Yeah. Then when I became an engineer, I was so surprised. All this good food you never get to taste and all this. Then my children knew. They go out with me for dinner or what. I know how to order. Uh, so last time before also used to say, uh, let Ken Kun order. Yes. I know how to order. Uh, then a lot of this food, uh, like last time during the early 80s, no, I just came out to work for two years earlier. My farewell dinner, 
they took us to a five star hotel uh, and ordered food that I never heard before or tasted before, no, Fat Tiu Chong, no, Mang Jam over the wall in the 80s, no, early 80s. No. And I didn't know uh, that dish alone, Chin uh, Kei Man, that time money very big. No. You get to eat. We had a condition were there. So it was a farewell for me because I leaving JKR. I went over to my new job. And the contractor were very grateful because they liked me. I very helpful. I share a lot of understanding with them and they learn and they are Chinamen now. But they like to talk to me because I don't look down upon them. I talk to them. I can be at their level. And most of them are Hakka. I also Hakka. So I went to the site, be very happy. Uh, oh, Mr. Tio, la 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 la. Then we speak Hakka. The worker also speak Hakka with us. Then we resolve issue and all those things. That's why they have gratitude. Then they have joy. And every time he like to come to the office and say, Hey, Japan, oh, oh, okay, Japan, call the colleague. Then we go. And this contractor is very generous because he brings some money during that time. Uh, we were very lucky when I graduated in 1979. The first Malaysia plan start, no? The fire plan, honestly. Not enough contractor, no? Too much job, no? Then, I remember I called my first tender, the reason war tender. Uh, not really big. But that time, two, three million is a lot of money at that time. And you know, it, I have to go and call contractor to tender, no? First tender advertiser, nobody tender until the pengarah tell me, say, Tio, you must go and call them one. Because they got too much job, they got no time. Oh, then when I call them, that few of them who know me are, oh, Tio, let me kill, let me kill, okay, let kill, lah. Yeah. They call them and submitted four or five. Yeah. But I know that time you can't find contractor and they have good rate. Uh, that's why they make the money. And this contractor told me, he said, last time he said, very tough, he said, recession time. He said, you do the job, the developer don't pay you. They cannot sell the house. Cash flow problem. So what they do? They ask you to take the finished product. Uh, he said, yeah, take one unit, two unit, you take. Uh, but you take the unit, no cash flow. You also die on as a contractor. Uh, but this Chinaman, very good. He said, Ulu Yesi, you must keep the money. He said, his cat spend. We are contractors sometimes, they spend money. He said, go and buy something that you can liquidate very fast. Uh, so he will buy property and all those things. And he has a lot of cash reserve. So after he take over the unit eh, during the recession, the 70s that time. Eh. He got three shop lot in Damansara Utama there. No? <laughs> because recession, nobody won. So a developer say, 160,000 you take. So he take, uh, he got money. Uh. Then he said he lived there. He lived it there right now. Uh. He said his rental was so good. No? In the 80s, uh, he bought 180,000. Uh. His three story, uh, uh, he can get rental six to seven thousand. No, uh, at that time, no, uh, six to seven thousand. Uh, one year, uh, let's say six thousand, seventy or thousand. No, two over year, the whole capital come back. No, uh, and he said that shall not keep on appreciating. No, he said what so kapuasi also buane gao tan. the property make more money than. His construction activity. That's why he now very smart. He every time tell me, he say, "Ati ati, I to send me. Do business very easy. Got money, keep the money. Uh, buy all this good asset during recession. Oh, then during recession, he say the tractor, the machinery, all very cheap. He say buy. Then during the boom, uh, the new one, uh, the pricing all very high. Uh, you no need." To go and hire, you have your own machine, you can send more hire out to people. That's why the cash flow come in and he make. And this guy uh, doesn't even know how to write or read or not. I say, how you tender? 
He said, "Why, Chai Hu? Because what? The the secretary、uh, read in Bahasa, no, we have the Thai Bahasa. Then some in English, then spec some in English. So he said that Chai Hu, but he very smart guy, you know. He through the the secretary、uh, read the thing.、Uh, he know what the thing is, and、uh, he is a great, a very good contractor. He strategize his contract on.、Uh, So he may be the lowest.、Uh, you not careful. You award to him. Ah,、uh, you know my office go one colleague, the Malay engineer Rostin Hassan Ariel.、Uh, he came and talk to me. He say, Mister Tio, this Mister Lim, ah,、uh, he very good lah.、Uh, he say, I also don't know. No, now only a、uh, VO ah、uh, come out.、Uh, only I know. <laughs> you know, he saw this new engineer. We only one at that. So concrete ah,、uh, because we do very little. Uh, concrete one,、uh, just water pipe or those thing, razor wall. So the anchor block or not much one. The concrete very small quantity. Ah,、uh. so he go and put instead of yard cube. Ah,、uh, during that time yard cube. Ah,、uh, he go and put foot cube. Ah,、uh, make cubic feet. No,、uh. oh goodness. He, he go and tender that one. Ah,、uh. he put very high price. Oh,、uh. and this was the new did a check. Didn't know. Then. Award to him. Then he got it. Actually, the concrete was not much, but he very smart. He went to the side. He see all the swampy area. He said he must put pier. He said,、uh, otherwise the pipe will sink. Yeah, he said that the anchor or、uh, you have put more.、Uh. So he work out、uh, the quantity. Ah,、uh, short out、uh, by almost tenfold. No,、uh. but his rate was ten times. Ah,、uh, no, your cubic feet. Ah.、Uh. <laughs> So instead of give it yeah lah, give it fear, it twenty seven times conversion no. But because quantity very small, he put ten times ah. It doesn't affect his overall tender price. Oh, but when he come to VO claim ah, he claim a lot of money oh. Until the pengarah question him oh, he say what is going on? He say, oh yeah, he say Mister Hila didn't adjust the rate. He came and told me on it. Then I laugh. Then I saw him. Wow, Mr. Lim is really high. Yeah, bola bola. Just dance, dance. That's why he very strong. So far, he very strong. Then he came to me. He said, "Oh, Mr. Lim, you are very high. Yeah, bola bola. Just dance, dance. That's why he very strong. So far, he is the smartest contractor I ever see. But life is like that. If you are sincere, you are simple. You have the parami. You make your money.、Uh, then later, when I left JKR, he still contact me.、Uh, he still contact me because he he very close to me and he like. To call me, and he found out my number in a new place、uh, from my office people.、Uh, very smart guy. That's why after that he became my good friend also.、Uh, so these are things that we will need to develop as understanding in cultivation.、Uh, some people has that paramion. Some people has that type of、uh, what they call good coming behind on. It may not be parami or what. They have affinity to you. They are sincere. They are truthful. So here, sincere doesn't mean that he cheat in the tender. Understand not? He didn't cheat. He tender. I call it smart and wise. Understand not? Because he didn't cheat. He know the strategy and he tender accordingly. That is the open tender. Everybody can code. But if you don't know how to code, of course you lose out. So contractor who are very smart, they will do their quantity check themselves, like housing. Oh, he told me he said, "Do you be say some thing QS one, QS value one,、uh, not correct one." He said, "Sometimes they make mistake one."、Yeah. So he work out. Then the QS will tell. He pay the QS one two thousand for him to take off the whole quantity of the project building. Well, involve a lot of similar repeated building. So when he take off, he know the quantity which one、uh, under code the quantity he will put higher rate. Which one over quantity of mission one he put lower rate.、Uh, but overall his tender is very competitive. Oh, you raise one.、Uh, that's why I I like to talk to him. Yeah, he tell me a lot of this、uh, trade secret that the contractor know.、Uh, so Dhamma is the same.、Yeah. There are other people who are,、yeah, because they are not there to cheat you. They don't behind your back,、yeah, 
take you for a ride. No. Open tender, they will tender accordingly. Because it's the way you strategize your tender. It's like you do your work. Whether you are efficient or you are not efficient, God will know. If you are not efficient, you will waste a lot of money, a lot of manpower, a lot of wastage, then you are inefficient. Then you cannot finish it in time, you cannot LED or thing worse. So that engineer who do the scheduling, the costing, the tendering, and the one that do the construction is very important. And you must get good people, your contractor, your subcon and all those things. Without that, you cannot. So Dhamma is the same, you have to know everything. That's why wisdom is the complete understanding. It's not just like knowledge, limited one, rigid one, here and there. One. No. Wisdom is when you understand, means you understand the totality. No matter what the condition, what type of situation, what type of people or what, you will have the understanding. One. Because when condition is different, when civilization is different, when the people are different, the coming behind is different, your nature will know one. Then you will know how to assess, you will know how to advise. Yeah, everyone is different. So without that understanding, you cannot really technically teach or resolve all this. So the stability of it, like you came to know that these are wrong view, you have to do the what they call repentance. You have to do. Uh, so all this understanding will evolve and become more and more stable. Because most of the time, if I'm not wrong, you all only have a chance to know this type of Dhamma during the sasana when you meet up with the true cultivator. Understand? <laughs> the true cultivator, especially great beings. Otherwise, uh, this type of teaching you cannot find. Uh. So what you learn, most of it is thought-based and knowledge-based. Uh. So if there has been the conditioning for so long over the eons and eons of birth and death, what will happen to you? You accumulate the habitual tendency, all this was stored inside there. And so your thought base seek one. Huh? Means you like to analyze, you like to reason, you like to like use the mundane mind to act and to do things, your views, your opinion, your conditioning, your beliefs. All these are affecting the individual cultivator. But people who don't have mindfulness, awareness, and the understanding, they cannot see. They cannot understand. They cannot link to coming and all things. That's why now it's very good. We are this sasana, you have the condition. And even to come to your level is not easy. Not easy. A lot of people, like you all went to, even your first five to six years, you told me you cannot follow. You don't know what I'm trying to share with you all. So, to have the understanding of what you are having now is already very good. I tell you, outside, hardly you can find anybody who really has the training and the Dhamma understanding. Most of them are still thought based, method, technique, and not clear about the uh, Dhamma. Because Jin Hao also off and on sent me some people who came to my website and read. And I was so surprised. There are people who appreciate and understand. And these are very rare people. You know? But what I share is not the normal Dhamma. Where have you in the past heard of awareness-based meditation? Everybody is talking about Vipassana, concentration, jhana. Or where have people talk about it? But now people appreciate oh, oh, And they rejoice and they thank me. So all this, you will go through. And you will develop the understanding, especially the Bodhisattva way, the Mahayana Sutta, and all those things. After we continue with the sharing and finish out the sharing, then after the retreat and all things, all these things will become clear to you all. Then you will move, you will move. Yeah. But the stability of mindfulness inside is very important. Stabilize that, then contemplate, reflect, inquire until very clear. Until all the understanding is there. Like I explained to Chin Hao Deo. It's not about right and wrong. 
Right and wrong is the way of the thought, the condition world, the duality. The truth is, nature has its condition. And condition keep on evolving, changing. As condition evolve and change, things change. That's why we cannot be rigid. We have to accord and flow. Then it's not right according to who? Because that is the individual, not the nature's truth. Nature's truth is no right, no wrong. Thing is just the way it is. Condition like that, things will be like that. Living being also the same. You cannot say this guy is an evil guy, this guy is a good guy. Because they are just the way they are. Deluded, they do deluded thing, or this wrong thing. If he is a cultivator, he has the wisdom, understanding, he will be virtue, he will do all this. He is the way he is. So, no right, no wrong, no evil, no good. But if you want to use the conventional, what they call mundane way of description, and then there is duality. That's why I say duality pertains to the condition world, the mundane aspect of existence. So, both the mundane and supramundane, you must develop as understanding, then live with the supramundane. But you can also exist as a normal human being form in mind. The three types of seeing, you remember? Kan san se san. Kan san pu se san is the second wisdom way. Then kan san yu se san, you come back to normal again. You merge with the existential world again, as a form of mind, as a human being, you live. You can talk that lingo and all those things. So duality to them, it exists. So you talk to them in that terminology. You explain to them in that way. But as they cultivate, they will move to deeper understanding. And then we share differently. So Dhamma is the wisdom way, non-rigid based on the ultimate truth, which is the unconditioned Dhamma, like the Heart Sutta saying all this thing. So all this, you will continue to improve and evolve and develop all this understanding, especially the cultivation part, uh, the third way and the fourth way that you mentioned that day. Uh, stabilize the third way, keep on aware and be with it, like what Kotlin did. Then he realized everything ceased. Then the mind becomes very quiet, very peaceful. Uh, then no matter what happens, stay with it. Uh, don't try to analyze it or reason or what, Ayo, why I still have this, why I still affected. Who is saying all this? The thought is saying all this, understand? No? The truth is, the reality is, these are condition arising state. Why can't I awaken to that, that this is the mundane condition arising, my state? Sankara anichang, sankara dukkang. If I attach and cling and give meaning, suffering arise. Then, sabbe dhamma anatta. Dhamma means the condition and the unconditioned. They are also non, uh, not a permanent and changing entity. That's why you cannot say this is me, this is I, non-self. That's why this awareness nature is not a being. It cannot come out and live like Not like the form of mind can come out and become a human being. No. That's why this one is not an entity. This one is a nature. A nature means what? It's not a being. It's anatta. <laughs> you cannot talk about it. It's not you. <laughs> but every form of mind has that nature. Understand? But this is the oneness nature, the origin, the true nature, the source. From there, everything arises. But to assess that one, you need a form of mind. That is the nature's boundary condition for it to arise. So all this understanding is not easy to develop unless you meet someone who has the understanding. So, okay? Yeah? So, uh, so, uh, uh, so, you can continue to uh, share on other things if you have. Uh, or you want to ask any more questions to make it clearer, you can. Uh, 
很 b r e a t h 呃，我最近这、啊、这这几次我我去的这个 retreat 了，啊、我我 go through 了一些的这个 experience 了，嗯，然后我做了 sharing， 那 b r e a t h 你的 explanation 让我更了解 ，Yeah Yeah Yeah，because I have go through， 因为有 go through 了 ，Great 啊，然后你一 explain 了啊，你才能够了解的 further step， 比如没有 condition I cannot speak 嘛，嗯、啊，因为你有了 condition 啊 ，then I can share further。That's why even Ng B they all,、uh, Alicia they all, and even Po Chen they all, sometimes they experience something that other people don't explain、uh, experience because they have this ability to stabilize their awareness until they can detect their their gateway to their nature. Then they can actually develop the meditative mind very fast,、uh, and they stabilize very fast. Then after that, they will go through that transformation. But that one to them is still very new because there is a lot of thing happening. That's why they will have question. Then when they ask, I explain a bit. They ask, I explain a bit.、Uh, not until when people really progress, then the full, deeper understanding can be explained and it can surface. Then like I told Pamasuri and Ingi that day they came to my house, Kuanyin Tan, I remember, and they were very, we were discussing all things. It was very beautiful. Then I say, yeah lah, I say five to ten years from now, when most people have the understanding, we will talk very differently. The Dhamma that come out is all very different.、Huh? Even like now when we share all this teaching. Very few people can understand.、Mm, very few, but surprisingly,、uh, the short video,、uh, they are some、uh, can appreciate. No, I don't mean they can understand. They can appreciate.、Uh, they know、uh, this one. The person who speak the um Kantan one, the Pujian Tan one, he means he understand and he know. But nobody speak like that one. Nobody teach like that one.、Uh, you got nowhere to copy from. <laughs> Or learn from them, because these are not ordinary teachings or dhamma. Even the sutta, you cannot find all these things, because the Mahayana sutta, like I always say, the sutta is meant for enlightened gripings. You are not that nature. You cannot understand what they say. You know, they have to use word to explain. Like the three hormones of feeling. How many people can really understand? Maybe the first hallmark, quite a number, can understand. But the second and the third, especially the third one, I think hardly anybody, unless your Monday mind collapse, you can never understand what no dwelling is.、Mm. Then the no mark also not easy. The penetrative awakening, the wisdom must be very extensive until you can understand why. The Buddha say, the five aggregate of form and mind through the Heart Sutta are empty. Wu Yun, Jie Kong, really Kong Sing also. And when you penetrate there, you really know that there is no mark. That's why Hui Ning can convert it into a teaching. No mark. No mark of what? No mark of self-cultivating. No mark of others. No mark of dhamma. No mark of life. No mark of whatever dhamma or、uh, existential thing. All these are mark. Yeah, they are within the condition world. That's why the real mark is unmark.、Uh, then nothing is apart from the real mark. Yeah, everything from there arises. But this real mark has nothing to do with the mark. That's why it's the unmark.、Uh, it's still a way of expression.、Mm. So all this understanding, unless you penetrate the nature within and awaken to it, you cannot understand.、Uh, the Wu Nian may be quite easy, but I also realize a lot of the Ro Dao I cannot understand. No thought. Uh, they they cannot understand. They understand it through the one pointedness one, energy field one, concentration samatha one.、Mm.
So the free mind without thought, they cannot understand unless they do awareness-based meditation. Mm. What you say is very true. Right? After you go through, you listen to my explanation, then you develop deeper understanding of it. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I was in a retreat before, uh, I was uh, meditating. I was meditating. 就是那个啊啊然后在这一次我 我就知道了,哦,這個fourth yeah, without mindfulness, you cannot see on. It go in very fast. It's like the heatless people are like that. It's like very mechanical. It become like sequan. Huh? It become your habits. You just do because you keep on doing it. Yeah. Habit is what you develop very often without mindfulness. When you are heatless, you you keep on doing this sort of thing. Then it become a habit. It's your habit. Yeah. But when you have mindfulness, you can see. You can understand why you do it because conditioned by all these wrong views. That's why when you awaken, when you have the Dhamma understanding, then you realize all this movement, no meaning. Sankara Anichang, Sankara Dukkham become extraordinarily clear. The Sankara movement, eh? they say all these are Sankara. Sabi Sankara Dukkham become very clear. Uh, then the first one of course is Sabi Sankara Anichang. Pian is in a state of flux, keep on evolving, moving, transforming. You must see it at the moment of its arising, sustain and then passing away. Every phenomenon is like that. Every instant, every moment, that stability of mindfulness must be very stable. Then you start to see. And that seeing is not through the thought, it's the direct seeing. Then you realize everything is like that in a state of flux. Uh, that's why when my second last guy, he she showed the Singaporean, he moved the hand. What did you see? Uh, the, that very moment, my nature awakened to the three universal characteristics. Not just, just that movement, no. It just awakened and realized everything is like that. Dependent, originating, condition arising, causal phenomena. He just say from that movement, arise already, cease, then move again. Just a hand movement. Right? But without mindfulness, you cannot see. Then it becomes a concept, then a theory. Then you cannot awaken. But when you are mindful at that moment, and that thing, that's why at the moment of its arising, sustaining and passing away, you can see it through the stability of mindfulness clearly, you will awaken, your nature will awaken. Then you realize everything is like that. Uh, yeah, I was inquiring once, truth is everywhere, why can't I see? So I keep on maintaining mindfulness, I don't want to know. Until suddenly the awareness saw. Oh. The other one is, I remember when I was driving, when my car passed by, I saw, I think, a dry leaf or whatever, just suddenly flew up and moved. From there, my nature awareness saw. Then after I saw that, I saw everything is like that. Even the sound, the vibration, everything is dependent originating condition. Where everything is in theory. Uh, then you will awaken on all phenomena like that. Everything like that. Then later on you silent. 
your heartbeat, your pulse, your vibration, everything, your senses, your feeling, your emotion, your thought process, the aggregates of mind, they are all in a state of flux, uh, dependent on your condition around your Then nothing is static. Uh, then when you completely silent, develop the ability to go back to that nature. And then the unconditioned, the cessation can come. Then you realize, eh? Hey, how come the conditioned world and the unconditioned so different? That's so why when the mind go back to tranquility, still not, that is your true mind. That one is without condition. That's why it can be in that state. Yeah. Without any movement, nothing. You, that is cease. Even the pure awareness also cease. Well, that is the first to come out. When that one cease, you return to that nature. Yeah. But the wisdom and the understanding has to be very stable uh, for you to understand the nature more and more. But the nature got a lot of things inside that one. Oh, a lot of possibility uh, where the normal living being haven't exploited or haven't, ex- uh, I call it, uh, haven't gone into it deep enough. There are very few people who can develop the ability to be in that state. Not to say stabilize it. To stay in that nature eh, for a long enough period to understand what that thing is. Then how it come out and develop the the, the, the starting of life. Uh, how you manifest as a form of mind again. Uh, how from that pure awareness after it come out, the pure awareness, then how it developed the mundane thinking and all those things. That's why I told you all from the bath, I come down, when I experience this I come down, right? then I saw the sense data all coming in, slowly, like slow motion like that. Then I know already, the Paticca Samopada are going to start already. Oh. Then the mind, yeah, very funny, you know, like can be there, you know, uh, seeing all this, you know, the, the dwelling, everything, avijja, how the mind, the, the avija, you will know, you know the, the old one, uh, and it wants to know, that's why I come to know, one thing to know, one thing to experience, it starts to think, you know, it creates some creativity. You know. oh. Then for my this case, when I came down with all my peer and when I saw the sense data come, then upon contact, then it triggered all the peer consciousness, then when the peer consciousness arise, how it retreat to the brain and go and create the activity to start thinking again. I saw them all. Then you come out and you become normal again and active again. But when you are deep inside, it's like slow motion on everything you can see on the whole movement or say. That's why it's like the scientists in the microscope, uh, the very fine microscope, they can see, they can magnify. You know, silent awareness is like that, make you sensitive, slow everything down, like for you to see. But everything is happening at the same speed, nothing slow down. Uh, but that nature can see, can understand, uh, and, and develop that special, unique quality. That's why I say it can be at the moment of contact, cannot move it. At the moment of feeling, pure feeling, it cannot move it. Oh, then it wants to think, Sankara activity, it can be at the moment we if it saw that movement already. But it cannot stir you on. It can be in that tranquil state. You know, but it cannot stir you on. It can make you unhappy over there. Oh, very funny. You know. oh, then at the moment of consciousness is the back. The pure awareness. Come on. In the seeing is the seeing consciousness. Nobody to see. Just like that pure seeing, like a baby, see. Oh. Before the perception everything come in. Uh, where it wants to know, it knows. Uh, where it wants to develop that perception of what it develops. Uh, you must have that stability to see all these things. Uh, then you, you laugh, you smile to yourself. No wonder living beings cannot understand, because they cannot see. They don't have that stability of mindfulness, that nature, not so stable. They haven't transformed and do like that. Hmm. Okay, very good. Eh? Sadhu. Yeah. So let us rejoice. Huh? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, 10.33 already the end. Huh? Uh, let us share marriage. Akasata chavumata 
ดีวานาเกมาหินดิกาปุญญังตังอันโมดิตัวจิรังรักกันภูกาศาสนาปิตาพุทธะจะเมหิสัมปดันปุญญาสัมปดันสัพเบดีวาอันโมดันตุสัพสัมปติสิดิยาอิดังเมญะทินังโหตุสุขิตาหันตุญาตโยอิดังเมญะทินังโหตุสุขิตาหันตุญาตโยอิดังเมญะทินังโหตุสุขิตาหันตุญาตโยเทววัสตุกาลินะสัสสัมปติเหตุเชะสิโตบาวะตุโลโกเชราชะบาวะตุดามิโกอิมินาปุญญังกามินามามิบาลสมะกโมสัตตังสมะกโมโหตุยาวะนิวานาปติยะสาธุสาธุสาธุ Okay, you can now pay respect mindfully to Lord Buddha, Konyin Bodhisattva, and all the worthy ones. Then we end the whole Zoom. Sadhu.